Today we're going to be talking about engine braking. Now, a lot of people comment on some of my heel and toe videos being like, why would you heel and toe, why just engine brake? I think people often overestimate how much engine braking actually does for you on a regular car. Now obviously trucks and things like that have high compression diesel engines with the ability to do compression braking, so they can actually get solid engine braking. But what we're going to look at today is how much engine braking you can actually get out of a regular sort of road car. It's important here to make the distinction between engine braking and clutch braking here, because I think a lot of people do clutch braking and think that's engine braking. So specifically, engine braking is when you're in gear, you let go of the throttle, and then the engine slows down the car. Clutch braking is when you're going along, you put it into a lower gear, and then you let the engine drop to basically idle, and then you let out the clutch, and that slows down the car. Now, clutch braking isn't ideal because it wears your clutch more than necessary. It's not a really good idea. You're better off using your actual brakes instead of your clutch because they're easier and cheaper to replace the pads. But in today's measurements, we're going to be looking at actual engine braking and how much that's doing for your car in deceleration. So the road for today's test starts off with a flat that I'm entering at 60 kilometers an hour, then it drops down at 0.12 gradient, goes flatter to a 0.045 gradient, and then goes back down to a 0.064 gradient. Okay, so for today's experiments, I've got my trusty little OBD2 wireless reader, and I've got a tablet, and we're going to get some readouts from the car so we can see when I lift off the throttle and what sort of deceleration we're getting. So this is going to be an engine braking test in fourth gear. So we're doing 60 right now, and let off the throttle at the top of the hill. Now we can see this is actually causing us to accelerate. We're at two and a half thousand RPM. I'm already at 66 k now, 67, 68. And now the hill's flattened off a bit, so we're losing out a little bit. 63, 61, 60. So we can see that in fourth gear, our engine braking on this hill is, is negligible. We're not getting any sort of braking at all. Okay, so we can see here the pink line is the throttle and then the blue and yellow lines up the top of my speed. So as we go along, I let off the throttle just there and we can see the speed goes up in fourth gear, not really doing anything. And then as the hill flattens off, it goes down a little bit and then it eventually just levels out. Now you can see my throttle's off the whole time until I start my braking zone for the corner. If you look, the second I hit on the brakes, there's an immediate and severe drop in speed. So engine braking in fourth at about 2,500 RPM, not doing really anything for you. Okay, so this time we're going to try a third gear, coming along at 60 k's an hour. In the corner, and here's the crest, crest and lift. And now on the hill where Maintaining about, oh, we're still going up, 65, 66. Now we've hit the flatter section. We hit 67 on there, so not too dissimilar. Um, we're at about three and a half thousand RPM topping out at. Then as we go down here, this is still a much flatter section, going down 54, 53. It's sitting pretty steady on 53, to be honest. Not really working well. And now we have to break for the turning there. And again, we can see. I lift there, my speed continues to rise as we go up up here, and then it starts to come down, definitely comes down faster than on the previous one, but it's sat pretty steady at 52, that was when I was at about sort of 2,500 RPM, and then again we can see when I hit the brakes at the end of the straight, it's like an order of magnitude up. It took us about 10 seconds to drop 10 k's an hour, which is pretty crazy when you consider that under very light braking, we, we drop from 50 down to 20, in, so 30 k's an hour in approximately two, three seconds. So again, third gear engine braking, not really doing anything. Let's see how second goes. So now we're going for the second gear run, and this is the one that's probably gonna get me hated by everyone because I can't imagine it's gonna be terribly quiet. Okay, so we're at four and a half thousand RPM in second gear, crest and lift. And this one in the first section of the hill, we're now staying stable at 60 k's an hour, which is a significant improvement from the other gears. Um, when we hit the flat section, yep, we're dropping quite fast, down down to 50, getting lower, 47, I might not even make the next section, 40, 38, 36, 35, 34, 33, 32, Okay, we're doing 30 k's an hour at 2,000 RPM here, 
we can see that the second braking has been far more effective. Okay, so we can see our let off there, and then for the first part of the hill, our speed stays pretty constant. Then we start to drop off at a much better rate than the other guys when we're on the flat, and it stays pretty much linear because we're wiping off a lot of that kinetic energy when we are when we slow down in the flat section. So then when the road steepens up again, we're not really losing again. Once we get to a low speed where we're only doing 2000 RPM, the engine braking effect obviously isn't as significant at the lower RPM because your pumping losses are lower, which means that we then don't really lose speed from that point onwards and the very gentle hill can keep us going downwards. Now as far as deceleration goes on that hill, we are looking at um, from about 55 k's an hour to about 30 k's an hour in about 15 seconds. So 30 k's an hour in 15 seconds. So again, way slower than you would on the brakes. And that's in second gear. And remember, I entered that straight at about four and a half thousand RPM. So that's, that's quite a high thing. So you can see that this engine braking phenomena isn't really giving you as much as you'd expect. So from that testing, basically what we could see is that the maximum engine braking that we could realistically achieve in second gear, because obviously you're not going to go to first for engine braking, that would just be crazy, is about 0.1 of a G because we were holding a steady speed down a 10 to 1 gradient. Now for the people that are probably going to say this test is invalid because they only did it on one car, I didn't. I actually tested multiple cars. Um, just I decided the 86 would be the best option to show. This is the log from my Toyota Hilux which has a lot more drag because it's a really bulky car and it actually didn't perform better, it performed worse. Um, this gentle roll here is on the flat, this one here was actually uphill and if we have a look at the uphill one, this was up the steep hill and we can see we've got from 20 seconds to about 25 seconds, so 5 seconds we dropped about 15 k's an hour, so not really much at all. And then when I was on the flat, about 15 seconds, we only dropped 12k an hour then. So you can see that this isn't just one car, this happens on all cars. The engine braking effect really is not that strong on a regular road car. So what did we learn from today? Well, as expected, engine braking isn't hugely effective. Now when you think about it, how can your engine braking be significantly more than the torque curve of your engine? It really can't be because you're getting explosions pushing you forward on one end, just pumping losses pulling you back on the other. So for your average road car, it makes sense that your engine braking would only pull about sort of 0.1 of a G, which is what we're seeing here. And when you compare that to on standard sort of road tires, the 0.8 of G that you can pull under braking, we can see that engine braking is only about an eighth of a car's regular braking. So what does that mean? It means that you can use engine braking if you want to gently slow the car down for traffic and stuff like that. But techniques such as heel and towing are still important because you need the extra magnitude of the brakes themselves if you're trying to slow down quickly or slow down for a corner, or anything on a racetrack, anything on a twisty road, and most traffic situations as well. By no means am I discounting engine braking, I'm just saying you need to use both appropriately and people are often overestimating how much engine braking actually does. And of course, you can feel free to go and try this experiment out in your own car. In addition to that, people that say that engine braking helps the brakes under braking are just wrong. Pretty much any modern car can lock up all four wheels under brakes. In fact, if you can't lock up four wheel under brakes, you're not really very safe. So your engine should not be assisting you to pull up faster you should always pull up at the same speed. And in fact, some automatic cars now shift to maximum gear under hard braking because it means a more consistent braking approach rather than having the torque bias splits that occur when engine braking is employed. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you found that video informative. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit that like button and check out my other videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next time.